Welcome on board. A bike that I've been excited to ride since it first launched last year. This is the Ducati Desert X. Super, super, super exciting bike. This is one of those amazing cool stories where a bike gets unveiled as a concept. It was unveiled at Eichma a good few years ago, big bike show, as a kind of concept throwback tribute to the Kagiva Dakar they call it the elephant. Uh, there's a picture of it on the screen right now. Here. There you go. But that concept as well, it's worth mentioning, was also based on an existing bike. It was based on a scrambler. They used a scrambler frame, a scrambler engine, and they kind of threw some bits together to make that really, really cool concept. But then when it came to making it time, well, they decided to start from scratch. So this is a ground up, completely new bike, with the exception of one component, and that is the engine. So what is the engine? Well, it's the V2 as found on the Ducati Panigale. Yeah. So let's give a quick run through. What is it? This is a bike primarily designed for off-road enduro riding. 80% of the development of this bike has been done off-road. However, only 10% of customers are predicted to actually take it off-road. Meaning that the vast majority of people are going to just do what I'm doing now. drive it on the road. The one thing that I'm not going to do, I do this frequently when I'm doing car and bike reviews now, is I'm going to try and avoid the big journalistic review on the bike for the simple reason being 13,598 people have already done the journalistic review of this bike. If you want to go and get a really, really, really detailed review of this bike with all the features, all the benefits, how it all works, how the cruise control works, what it's like with usability, what it's like to commute on, all that sort of stuff. There are people out there that have done those videos and I encourage you to go and watch them. So what I decided to do today to make things a little bit different is focus on that fact that the bike is designed as an off-road bike primarily, an enduro bike. And it's been marketed by Ducati as a bike that is very easy to ride off-road. I wonder how easy it is to ride off-road because I am not an enduro rider. In fact, I've never ever ridden a bike off-road. You can see where I'm going with this, can't you? I'm currently riding along in quite an expensive Bellstaff jacket wearing Kevlar jeans and some Timberland boots. So you could say I'm not exactly equipped for off-road riding. However, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now I cannot stress enough of how much of a bad idea this is. I, as I just mentioned, have never ridden off-road before. I'm not used to riding off-road. I'm not used to riding on low grip surfaces. I'm not really used to getting wet. I don't tend to ride in the rain. Whilst it's not raining today, and in fact, it does feel like it's about 30 degrees right now, it did rain a lot overnight. So I'm expecting the track that I'll be using to be quite muddy. And I should probably mention the track that I'm using because there is a golden rule with off-roading and green laning. Firstly, check that you're able to ride it and drive it. I have, I am. But the other rule is to walk the route first and make sure you're aware of what's coming up. Have I done that? Have I balls? So I am going to be doing something that's very stupid, very ill-advised. I would recommend that nobody does this, but it's in the interests of the internet, the community, and ultimately getting views. So the title of this video is either John goes green laying on the bike for the first time, or John writes off £14,000 worth of Ducati press bike in spectacular fashion and breaks his back. We shall see. Before I set off though, I said I wasn't going to do a full 
review of the bike, which I'm not gonna do for obvious reasons, because everybody else already has. This is gonna be about the adventure. But there are a few things that I'll mention. I've strategically and subtly made some notes on my phone, which I'll just open up here. I was supposed to do that off camera so you wouldn't tell that I'm reading from a script, but hey, we're all friends here. This is how it works. So here it is. The Ducati Desert X, 14,095 pounds worth of enduro bike, a bike that has been primarily designed to ride off road. And yet here I am riding it on road up until this point. It's 220 kilos, that's uh, with a bit of fuel, uh, 202 kilos without fuel. Uh, there is also the option to have a bit more weight and a bit more fuel because there is also an accessory fuel tank that you can put on the back here. It gives you another eight litres of fuel, another eight kilos in weight. That goes on the back. When your main tank gets empty, it pumps the fuel to the front. Quite cool. If you're going mega off-roading, that's exactly what you want to have. Power-wise, as I mentioned, as we were riding here, it's got the V2 engine, that iconic V2, as seen on a Ducati Panigale V2. And it's here, it's in this enduro bike, utterly bonkers. 110 brake horsepower at 9,250 RPM and loads of torque as well. It's got 92 Newton meters of torque at the peak rev range of 6,400 RPM. It's pretty good. Top speed of 130 miles an hour as well. This is not a slow bike. And so I'll be taking this not slow bike um, off road over there. Is this a bad idea? Now I feel I should make it very clear. When I said just before I set off that I've never ridden this green lane before and that I've never off-roaded before, I was being 100% honest. So this is gonna go one of two ways, as I said. I'm either gonna fall off in spectacular fashion and destroy this beautiful new Ducati press bike or I might somehow get away with this. So this so far looks easy. Standing up using a much of my balance weight as possible. I can just feel the back end sliding around slightly. I'm going to go up to second. Oh, the grass is a bit more grippy. Okay, all right, that's good. Gravel. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, now uh, you're going to hear me saying lots of things like nice, nice, nice. And uh, whilst doing quite dramatically slow speeds, and there'll be, I'm sure, lots of people watching this who perhaps are enduro riders, people that frequent these sort of green lanes, who'll be laughing at me because I'm going so slowly. Um, I'm okay with that, for the simple reason of I'm an absolute amateur. But so far, this is making it quite easy. Some of the things I'll mention about this bike whilst I'm on the easy bit, I don't know how much more difficult it's going to get actually, um, is, oh, oh, there we go, back end sliding around. So the handlebars are adjustable. These can be twisted up to make it a bit more friendly for off-road riding and standing up like this. And then you can adjust them to go back down again for more comfortable road riding. That is a mechanical adjustment. You need to do it with the tools. Uh, there's another one as well on the foot peg. The rear brake is adjustable. Uh, the foot peg is adjustable. So you can twist it 180 degrees upside down so that it's easily accessible for the, for the foot while standing up. And then when you get back on the road, you just clip it out, turn it around. No tools required. And it's in road mode for a more comfortable seating position. Okay, right. Now it's looking like it's getting a little bit more slippy slidey in the back end. Now I have watched a video of the road. Aha, and this is what I'm waiting for. I'm gonna go down to first. Let's have a little look and assess. I'm gonna avoid that one. Okay, let's go. Oh, that's, that was not graceful, however. 
<laughs> before I can't do it. <laughs> I agree. I dread to think what the comments are saying right now from the experienced riders. But hey, cut me some slack for my first day. And that was the point of this test, is to see if a complete rookie like me can slide around <laughs> through mud and rocks and sticks and trees and other things without without coming off. And so far, I am succeeding. <laughs> okay, right, it's getting a bit steeper now. So this is a hill. We're going up it. I'm going to keep standing. Yeah, lovely, lovely. You can feel the bike moving around a lot underneath. However, it's not it's not dis discerning at all. Oop, there's a bit of a slide there. There we go. So, yeah, the back wheel is constantly spinning. But I guess, in the setting that I'm in, that's okay. Because, if the traction control was on full, then it would just be constantly start-stop digging in. And it's working nicely. There we go. Well, remember, this is a 200 kilo bike, or... 220 kilos with a full tank of fuel. That's a second. Woo. So it's not a light thing, you know, enduro bikes tend to be closer to 120 kilos, 150 kilos. But this is 220 kilos plus 90 kilos of me. Oh, okay, here we go. I might be able to stand up again now and have the Thick woodland is coming to an end. Right, there we go. Okay, I think I might have got through the most technical part. In fact, I think I'm near the end. Oh my god, I did it! <laughs> Without falling off! Admittedly, I perhaps came close, but... Wow. Wow for many reasons. Wow for the fact that I firstly didn't die or break any ankles or drop the bike. But secondly, because just as Ducati claim, that was surprisingly straightforward. For somebody that's never been off-road before. Oh, right, luckily for me, there is an on-road loop which I now can ride down. Just test that brake brake. Oh yes, lots of ABS action on the back. Whilst we're still full of mud, I would expect the front is probably the same, so I'll take that nice and easy. In fact, I'm going to go rear brake only whilst going down here. Don't want to lose the back or the front. Whoa, but look at that. An absolute rookie amateur has just gone off-road for the first time in his life. Didn't fall off, nearly, but didn't fall off. Didn't drop the bike. Didn't even stall it. And that cannot be credited to me. There is no way that can be credited to me because I am an absolute filly when it comes to off-roading. That made that quite easy. Wow. And also, look, I'm now still in enduro mode, but I'm back on the road. I've not stopped to wash off any mud or anything like that. I'm just on the road as if I would have been at all times. And look, the brakes have come back. The brakes, I should mention on here, by the way, are utterly phenomenal. They are so good. And again, that's because whilst it's been designed as an off-roader, it has to be good on the road because that's what the majority of people are going to be doing. The majority of people spending their actual money on this bike will not be doing what I've just done. The most mud they're going to see is probably a little puddle somewhere on their road. But I am absolutely blown away. Absolutely blown away. Wow. <laughs> Back to national speed limits. Comfortably riding along at 40 mile an hour, having just been through a sequence of muddy bogs, loose gravel, loose stones. Wow, 
wow, wow, wow. Back to the start, back where it all began. <laughs> I think I might do that again. Now I don't want to be one of those annoying smug people, but I think I am going to be one of those annoying smug people. I've just been off-roading for the first time in my life on an enduro bike, a big, heavy enduro bike, and I didn't die, I didn't fall off, I didn't break any limbs, and the bike is still in perfect condition, albeit some extra weight in the form of mud. We will jet wash this off. I have to give this back to you, Cassie, in a couple of days, so we'll go and do that in a minute. But before we do, it's worth celebrating the brilliance of the Ducati Desert X. Even a complete billy like me can take it off-road and do marginally impressive speeds. I think at one point I was doing 20, 30, 35 miles an hour on the loose gravelly stuff. Yeah, you can feel it moving around, but at no point does it feel scary. It feels really controllable. It's almost, dare I say it, planted a seed for perhaps a new hobby, perhaps a new bike. I was a bit scared before I took delivery of this um, for the only reason being that loads of other people that have already reviewed them have actually ended up putting down orders and buying them because they loved it so much. And I'm a little concerned that I might be doing the same. Fantastic on road, clearly fantastic off road. Okay, I know there's gonna be enduro riders having watched this, having a good old laugh at the speeds I was doing. I'm not gonna be setting any world records anytime soon, but for me to be able to go down muddy routes like this, getting caught in muddy bogs, sliding the back end around, looking like I perhaps know what I'm doing, it's not credit to me, it's credit to this, the Ducati Desert X. A wonderful, fabulous, incredible way to spend 14,000 pounds. Go and buy one, I probably will. Right, where's the car wash? <laughs> 